Right, hi, I'm Kelly Pickard, AIA uh, Director of Building Science and Technology, and today we're going to be talking about the AIA 2030 Commitment Program, and specifically um, our second year results, which were actually released just this morning. Um, so we're going to be getting started on um, talking about these results and, and results that we'll be looking at more in depth at a session um, right after this at 2 o'clock today. Um, so the AIA 2030 Commitment is a program that that the AIA put together um, to address our role in getting and, and meeting the AIA, the, the 2030 targets. Um, so the goal of this program obviously is, is for our buildings to get to a point of right now where we want to see a 60% reduction uh, moving all the way to, to carbon neutral by 2030. But what makes this program a little bit different is that rather than looking at individual buildings, what we ask our firms to do is actually track and measure every active project in the design phase each calendar year so that they have an understanding of their entire design portfolio and we're focusing on the big picture and not just our exemplary projects. And so what the way that this program works is we kind of take a stepped in process. Uh, once a firm joins, we have some basic targets that, that they are to meet um, that first focuses on their own firm operations and then looks into developing a sustainability action plan and then getting into a point to where they're reporting the annual progress of their design targets um, each year and that's what the bulk of this presentation is going to take a look a look at today so as of today we have uh, or i should say the end of april we have 213 firms that are a part of this they range from the sole practitioner to the multinational office um, and what we show here is that there's a, a large mix of size of firms that are participated in this. This is not just a, a large firm initiative. Uh, we have a varying type of, of firms that are involved in this effort. The, the results that we're going to be looking at, uh, this is how we define, this slide shows how we define those um, active projects. So an active project that's in the de design phase during the calendar year, uh, meaning any any new new design or any project with uh, that included at a minimum um, HVA system modifications or substantial envelope uh, modifications, and then we also track our interiors only work um, through tracking uh, LPD. So some of the key definitions that that we'll be talking about today, uh, we have energy use intensity, and then for the for this program we use a term a lot uh, predicted energy use intensity because right now we're focusing on setting the design targets in the first place. So we uh, want to make the distinction between energy use intensity, which is based off of actual performance, uh, versus the, the predicted energy use inten intensity, which is what our uh, design projects are, and then uh, lighting power density. So the way that these projects are reported in the results, um, it, the key here was simplicity. We focused on some key metrics. Um, the Excel reporting tool does, does the rest of the work. You'll see in this slide, uh, the only thing that a firm really needs is a project identifier, the gross uh, square footage, the building type, um, and, and whether or not the project was modeled. Um, and if it wasn't modeled, then all you need to know is what, what code it was built uh, to meet. And then uh, the lighting power density. So for the results that were released this morning, this is to take a look at um, the, the number of firms that we have participating uh, compared to the number of firms that were able to get a report in um, this year. One of, the, one of the things that we'll see that's a benefit here is in, in our first year, last year when we uh, released the results, we had 56 firms uh, that were actually able to implement that reporting process and that jumped up to 104 this year. Um, so if anything, that is probably what we are uh, most excited about is that our, our firms were able to implement this reporting process and we saw an increase in those from every firm size in their ability to get in reports uh, and, and show us the, the progress that they're making. So now to, to look at kind of the, the big picture results of what we're seeing here. So the way that these firms report to AIA, we don't report individual firm data. We roll it all up to get a snapshot and basically have these firms serving as a representative sample uh, for how we are collectively as a profession doing towards meeting these targets. So what's represented in this year's report, as you'll see from this slide, is 656 uh, million, just over 656 million um, gross square footage of design work that are that is represented by these results. So what we don't see, and I, and I don't think that anyone that is involved in this uh, effort would have expected that that we would see a great change. Um, so 
th this first metric looks at the average firm uh, predicted energy use reduction from national average. So this is across the board, um, putting, pulling all the projects together. What is the average reduction that our firms are, are targeting or are reaching uh, with, with all of their projects? And that's 35%. Where we want to be right now is 60%. Um, one of the things that, that perhaps this does show us is, is going from a first year where we don't, you can't really draw trends or conclusions after one year of results, but going from 56 to 104 and having about the same type of, of metrics being reported back, it gives us a sense that this might be uh, a fairly accurate gauge of, of where we are. The other key metric that we look at is, besides that uh, predicted energy use intensity reduction, what percentage of the firm's entire portfolio is meeting that current 60% target? And in an ideal world, what, it, what that would be at is, is 100%. Every project that we touch, we, we would be uh, targeting and, and expected to get a 60% reduction. Obviously, that's not the case um, of, of where we are. Um, so we're, we're at 12%, which I think shows us that we have a ways to go. Um, but at the same time, I, I think what is most encouraging is that um, when people saw these results last year, that they saw a 35% reduction, that they saw a 12% of the portfolio meeting those targets, um, that we still had a 70% increase in the firms that reported. That did not dissuade any firm from joining, uh, did not dissuade anyone from moving forward. I think, if anything, what it showed is that uh, collectively, as a profession, as an industry, we are, we are struggling with this, with this issue, and it's, it's no reason to not move forward. Uh, with, with trying to meet these targets just because we're not there yet. So I think the, the, positives, the positive here is that we still saw an increase in reporting despite um, the results we're seeing. So for the interiors work uh, that was reported, we, we measured that at, uh, against uh, using ASHRAE methodologies. We, we picked uh, a 25% reduction target. Um, look at that. Uh, you, you can get more details about that in the report. But choosing that because, uh, generally speaking, a good target. It's what qualifies for, for some lead credits. It's also kind of a threshold for a lot of incentive-based uh, things. So our interiors projects measuring up fairly well for what's widely regarded as um, a good threshold target. Another thing that we ask for our firms to show us is what percentage of their projects did they model. Um, and so for this one, we see that we're not really modeling uh, perhaps as much as we'd like. Uh, one of the one of the comments we got back in a, in a firm survey was that they really wanted to see this number uh, go up, uh, not modeling a project uh, that person likened to driving a, a car blindfolded. Uh, we don't, if we're not even having a sense of where we want to be, um, how can we know if, if we're going to get there? So that's a number we want to see uh, go up, and, and the AIA is putting a lot of resources towards um, energy modeling. We also ask for, for uh, an idea from these firms of of how many projects they actually have a process in place for collecting actual data, knowing that what we're reporting is primarily predicted energy use. Um, what percentage of their projects are they going to actually go back and track and figure out how, how it aligns? And I think this is a, another real positive piece in this year's report is we saw that number go up 9%. Um, so I, that's going to be a, a key metric in, in successfully reaching our targets is, is connecting that um, design intent to actual uh, usage. So some of the, the second year reporting conclusions that, that we've touched on is that um, clearly we're capable of reaching these targets. We're seeing that we wouldn't have an average of 35% if we didn't have projects that were meeting that 60% threshold. Uh, but what we need to, to do a better job on is, is connecting these energy targets more uniformly across the portfolio. Um, we'd like to see some more consistent energy modeling um, um, used. We, we believe it's a, a key to, to meeting our targets. Um, and that the increase in actual energy use data is a positive sign. It shows that we're, we're moving in, in the right direction and that our focus um, in the next couple of years will actually be to, to create the firm resources based on what we're seeing as trends um, evidenced by these reports of areas where our firms are, are struggling. Um, and that lastly, that there's a need to, to better demonstrate um, the value of, of the AIA 2030 commitment, that what it can provide to firms, that it's more than just a reporting process, um, but better ways to showcase the stories of firms that are taking that data and taking what they've learned and putting it back into the firm 
um, to improve their own processes and getting value out of the, the program rather than just treating it as a reporting process. So with that, I appreciate you taking your time uh, to be here and, and come to the session at 2 o'clock to hear more.